Hello and welcome back to the Misfits podcast, rated five stars on iTunes by Nav Davis. He says, this podcast gave me PTSD. Oh no. In brackets, post-traumatic stress down syndrome. <laughs> oh. oh. That is a, fucking funny. What a fucking goofball. What are you, My what, word. What are you making that face for, Toby? Are you astonished? That is a frightfully good joke. Oh, it's so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we are so blessed to have such a humorous audience, Toby. Oh, thank you very much. I am joined today by my co-hosts, Swagger Souls. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Swagger Souls here. And of course, the illustrious Toby on the telly. Hi, I'm the illustrious Toby on the tally. That is all for today, everyone. It is just the three of us. Mm. Um, you were little, introduced yourself, little, right? Uh, oh, I'm Fitz, by the way. I um, I do the talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, easily, <laughs> sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I uh, I got a very successful YouTube channel, like millions and millions of subscribers. It's been going a long time. Are we allowed um, to promote ourselves? Ask me questions about it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, How before... long have you had a massive ego? Oh, man, as long as I can remember. I mean, my memory is so strong that I can actually think back to the first time I developed it. Um, mm. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Anyways, guys, brought to you as always by gamersubs.gg. Yes. Uh, powering the podcast. And of course, uh, just before we go on, I got to mention a couple things. Number one is that we're going to be at the Melbourne Esports Open at the end of this month. Uh, you can get 10% off tickets if you go to melbesportsopen.com slash misfits. Spell it out. <sighs> Do I have to? <laughs> Maybe. M E L B E S P O R T S O P E N dot com. Can you spell com audience? Can you spell com? C U M. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Slash misfits. Yeah. And of course, uh, as well, we have some bomb new merch dropping on August 23rd. Go to misfits.store yeah. on August 23rd and. Grab yourself that shit. Mm. And we will now commence with the show. Swagger, you were talking about something very interesting just before we started rolling. At the rolling. Patreon pre-show. Yeah, did, did y'all know that fucking Lady Gaga's like four foot three or some shit? Imagine she's being like really a, short. She's like a fucking midget, man. Were you looking up celebrity heights to compare? <laughs> <laughs> no. I wish. Absolutely I how, not. I wonder if this person's taller than me. Who is shorter than four <laughs> foot four? Full-sized <laughs> cutout <laughs> of Tom <laughs> Cruise. <laughs> He's like My typing God. on his keyboard no no <laughs> now, what's the deal why are you looking the show up Every, i don't know i mean ever since we got rich here we got we got our boy caesar rich one of one of our designers uh finally back. he's very small oh yeah dude he's shorter than me by like an inch and mm. it's fucking awesome and it and honestly feels so good to finally not be the fucking shortest person around you never know how much you get dogged on until there's someone shorter than you because then it's like ooh, now i can be the bully now you can really kick yeah. the shit out of someone now, now now i'm at least not bottom of the pecking order mm. based mm. on height i have noticed you just horrifically bullying poor rish yeah just, you know he's yeah. okay with it i've seen you whipping him yeah uh, nay, nay, also <laughs> it's despicable really youtube yep. viewers will notice that the set has changed a little bit yep we got some posters yeah, some new shit's happening. It's probably going to change every week for a little bit because we're just going to be experimenting with stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hope you like it, guys. I, I really dig the poster vibe. I, like I think it, it looks too. good on the bricks. Well, I don't mind. For our audio listeners, who we love dearly, by the way. Um, we have a Reefer Madness poster. They're like these sort of... Uh, I don't know. How would you explain these? Like pop art sort of old school? No, old like, school. It's a very old school kind of like movie poster based on the film A Reefer Madness. Um, oh, it's, it's actually a movie? Them. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an old movie. If you oh. watch it, it's fucking hilarious. It's just a bunch of like th these are like the boomers before the boomers. Like wow. these are like the the really ignorant people. The nukers. <laughs> you know. Wait, so this yeah. movie is like anti-weed or is oh, it like... Oh, it's extremely anti-weed. Really? Because yeah, it looks like, sarcastic. It does because, you know, you're in fucking... <laughs> You're in 2019, <laughs> you realize, you know, it's not 1937, mm. you know, these, these people were smoking weed in Hollywood and going like, oh, this is going to kill you. You're insane. You're fucking crazy. You're going to murder people. Right. Because you, you're smoking a little bit of the fucking ganja. You're smoking a little bit of that, that Mexican herb. Mm. And they did not like Mexicans back then. <sighs> Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't actually, but y y yikes. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, so have you seen the film Reefer Madness then? <laughs> Fuck no. Oh. You, Wait, you haven't it? seen it? No, I haven't seen it. No. no. I, I'm not a fan of black and white movies. Uh, okay. But <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying... <laughs> I, I I should I should give it a watch. I mean, there you know, goes it, our sixty it, plus audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old ass movie. I mean, it's just the way. Like, I don't like watching really old movies because they're so old. It's just when you when you 
look at a fucking movie that even in the seventies, you're watching a vintage movie from the seventies. Just the fucking the amount of white noise in, on those microphones oh, that yeah? they use. Yeah, the sound quality itself is just fucking terrible. Mm. It's and just I don't know. I, I don't find it that appealing to watch a movie in the thirties that just sounds like. Oh no! It was fucking, you know, it's all I, muddy and fucked up. <laughs> I thought back then they just used like the picture cards with the words on them for talking. No, is that older that's, still. That's going back to like fucking like 1910s, the Nazis, mm. as as we were discussing mm. in the Patreon pri- uh, Patreon pre show. I had asked um, Cam. I said, you know, when you're talking about like generations, like from 2000 to 2010, like what do you call that? You yeah. know what do you what do you call it? And he said apparently it's it's the naughties because not yeah. it means zero, and because they were very naughty. Very naughty. Was it really that naughty of a time? It was kind of naughty. People were getting raped. And shit. I feel like it wasn't it was that wild, naughty. Dude. I feel I don't like know. Dude, I mean, <laughs> so much shit was going on, like in like rap culture and like Hollywood and stuff. It was a naughty yeah, time, dude. Naughty. Nine eleven. Nine eleven, the naughtiest yeah, thing of that's all. That's pretty fucking naughty, <laughs> dude. You know they got in Santa's bad list for that one. That yeah. was crazy. <laughs> they, they, they got put in the naughty corner. Man, that's wild, man. All right. Um, so here's the podcast, guys. We're hey, in it. This is uh, we're, we're in this shit. This is the kind of stuff to, we're known to talk about. Get used to it. Do you guys follow any conspiracy theories? Only Shane Dawson. I don't know. I mean, some some I like follow, others I don't. I don't know. It, it depends on the conspiracy. It really does. A lot of the conspiracy theory shit, like, I look at just to wonder what the crazy people are up to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, a lot of it I, I don't really take seriously. Mm. What Did you have one in mind that you want to talk no, about? No, I was just curious. Mm. I mean, there are so many conspiracy theories, but the problem is is that all of them are batshit insane. You know what I mean? There's yeah. a couple maybe that are like... I can't remember them right now, but there's some that you look at and you're like, I can see that. Well, I mean, intro. obviously Hitler... Is still alive and living in a bunker in the in in Antarctica. Argentina. I don't know why you're bringing that up. That's Argentina. Like yep. true. I heard Argentina. it was in Antarctica. No, no, that's Argentina. Argentina would be you couldn't hide in Argentina. Sure you as can. Hitler. He's white as fuck, dude. He would have to go somewhere where there's not many people. Yeah. Argentina. Why? Why, why is it <laughs> that the rainforest? Why, why is it that Argentina is where he's uh, supposedly? Because staying? Argentina gave uh, asylum to uh, a lot of Nazis, I believe. I really? believe it was Argentina. I, 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 I could be. I could be wrong. Antarctica. I could be yeah. wrong. So don't don't quote me on this, Argentinians. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just saying. A furious. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like in the 1940s or something. I think it was Argentina that gave uh, Nazis uh, asylum. Political I, asylum. I heard uh, in, <laughs> in a conspiracy theory that he was sending Nazis to Antarctica to build him a fortress in Antarctica that he then fled to. Okay. I, I think <laughs> I think I think he uh, I think he just bit down on a bit of cyanide. Yeah, I mean I had his officer shot him. What do you reckon his last like thoughts were? Old man Hitler. Damn, uh, my cousin's hot. <laughs> didn't he he married his cousin, right? No, he ma- some fucking. Oh God, we are so deeply ignorant. <laughs> someone, he ma- Ava von Braun, I, I, I believe. I thought he married some his cousin, and she was really young or something. You also thought that he fled so. during Antarctica. Well, I didn't. I didn't think that. <laughs> <laughs> man, Hitler guy, man, what a what a wacko, what a, character, what a fucking Truly wacko. The Alex Jones of his time. I didn't say that. What the fuck? <laughs> no, definitely not the Alex I Jones. I said Alex Jones. Jones. I, uh, fucking coward. Yeah. Oh man, the best. Come on our show, please. Come Hitler, on. Yeah. Hitler, come on and defend yourself. <laughs> defend yourself. Or Alex Jones. Or Alex, or Alex Jones. I'd love to have Alex on here. Mm. I, Alex Jones would be a great podcast guest. He's I mean, a, he's the kind of person that you just sit there and he'd talk the whole time. Yeah, and then he'd try to choke you out. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'd be able to beat Alex Jones in like a wrestling match? I, I don't think, think so. beat Alex Jones off. I think Alex Jones has that pure rage that I couldn't he's, fight. He's got that super male vitality, bro. Yeah. I think he's also probably stronger than me. Just no, like, no cap. Like have you seen? Have you seen images of Alex Jones when he was younger? He used to be a fucking bodybuilder. He's a handsome guy, right? He, he, he has, was fucking ripped. He has the body shape of a bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was absolutely shredded when he was like fucking twenty or thirty. Mm. Yeah, I can see it because he's got very. He's very broad up top. Yeah, very wide. He probably has a massive cock. We're really buttering it up, so we're coming our show right <laughs> yeah, now. He on. probably <laughs> looks like Kylo Ren. <laughs> he's just very just wide. Just really wide. <laughs> very wide. God, I wish he'd called me. A coward that would be the best <laughs> run off to me in the street i have fantasies about it um 
Okay, going back to the old reef proposals on the wall, mm-hmm. I talked uh, before the show began about how much drugs have influenced pop culture and mm. kind of what like the in culture is like throughout history. I'm kind of wondering if that's going to go away now, though. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't because reckon. of legalization. Legalization, like uh, it's very, it's way more normal to mm-hmm. smoke weed and stuff like that. Like weed in particular, I think had a huge impact on pop culture weed and cocaine oh yeah sure cocaine probably did fucking retarded shit for entertainment that we oh, yeah. know about in the 60s and 70s Dude, yeah 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 you know, cracked out like crazy on, you know, on that coke i don't know if you ever seen uh what, what the fuck was it called it a, a stupid and insignificant gesture or something it was i've heard of it it was about uh doug kenny he was this uh he did the national lampoon it was this uh i think it was, i believe it was a magazine uh, a, a parody magazine in the, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, he 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 uh, he had the National Lampoon uh, do uh, movie production, so they did Caddyshack. They did uh, what was it? What was the other one? Uh, uh, Animal House. I've heard of Animal yeah, House. The the two like you know two very big comedy movies in like I think the late 70s, early 80s. I can have my time periods fucked up, mm-hmm. but so much cocaine. Yeah, so much cocaine. If you watch the, the I believe it was on Netflix for a while. Mm. Really, really good movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, it, I, I mean, like not only that, but music as well. Like sure, mm. for, and as far Hugely. as as far as music and comedy goes, I feel like weed and cocaine. <laughs> have done so much like god bless weed and cocaine i would never we, do cocaine weed to make you imaginative and cocaine to make you productive make you do it yeah because <laughs> yeah. um yeah i mean god damn shit, shit was crazy yeah, it's one of the only things you know i i i can't ever imagine myself doing is cocaine mm. you know something about pills and powders you know i i can't fuck with um and just snorting something just the, the gonna, idea it's gonna hurt right well, it's got to be fucking uncomfortable. You're snorting it. It's going up your sinuses. It's going behind your eyes. It's going down into the fucking, like, two holes at the roof of your palate. Mm. And then it's sinking down into the back of your throat. It must be fucking, it must be agonizing. Yeah, but I think you're so cracked out that you don't really notice. Yeah, but I don't want to be cracked out. I, yeah, I can't, I don't, I've never done, like, a stimulant other than Gamer Sup's caffeine, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and and that's and this is more than enough. This, oh, has, yeah. this has me gunning and beaming. Look, I'm not saying I want to do cocaine. I'm just saying that like cocaine has had its way with pop culture sure. and like, I don't know. I don't want to say that it was like a positive thing, but like imagine how shit, how different shit would be if it wasn't for mm. cocaine. You're probably right. Like, uh, but then again, mm. maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it wasn't that big of a, di- a, a deal. I feel like it's, it was. I feel like people like admit that it was as well. Yeah. yeah. There's an argument to be made that China wouldn't even exist if it weren't for marijuana. You reckon? Yeah, well, there was this really, there's this really old stoner tale. It's hard to, te- it's hard to tell whether or not it's, there's any real legitimacy mm. uh, in this. But apparently, the uh, some some king, some emperor was sitting on his throne, and he had a bunch of his servants go out and pick uh, the marijuana flower, you know, and just leave it in his uh, his like palace and burn it as incense because he liked the smell. Mm-hmm. So he practically hotboxed the fuck out of his out of his you know room. And uh, he was just chilling there, baked as fuck. Listen to Pink Floyd, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bird flew onto his windowsill and spoke to him. I've heard this. And, uh, and told him to invade the neighboring kingdoms. <laughs> and so he was like, I bet. And then he <laughs> invaded the neighboring kingdoms. And then he was what? I believe the first uh, emperor of uh, China. Seems kind of like a weak excuse for invading the neighboring kingdom. <laughs> yeah, a some, bird yeah. fucking told me to. <laughs> a little bird told me to <laughs> do it. Like, I don't want to let that bird down. A little birdie told me. I mean, like, if you were in that position, are you really going to take advice from a bird? And was it only weed if he's seen a bird talk? <laughs> probably a lot of weed. <laughs> like, there wasn't some other magic yeah, I mean, shit he probably didn't have, in there? He probably didn't have any tolerance. I don't think anyone had any tolerance back then. Do we know when, like, people discovered getting high? Getting high on what? On People, weed. Have, I think animals have been getting high just for ages. You reckon? Oh, millennia, Damn. easily. Like what kind of animals? <laughs> dolphins. <laughs> yeah, dolphins, dude. You know dolphins. <laughs> yeah, dolphins. Dolphins they, get stoned. They, they pass eat, around like, pufferfish. Yeah, pufferfish. Puffer Wait, what? Yeah, they intentionally uh, get get the toxins from pufferfish because it gets them high. Dolphins There's, are no doubt like the dirtiest animal. You know oh what I mean? yeah, they rape. They're fucking assholes. <laughs> They're animals, but bro. Like uh, ducks real. rape as well. Mm, yeah, ducks yeah. are big rapists. Ducks are cute as shit, though. So you can't <laughs> even blame them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
We can have a Me Too movement for ducks later <laughs> like in the century. <laughs> there was fucking... Uh, the, a study suggests that dolphins, you know, when they were chewing on the puffer fish, you know, the, so it was like a pod of dolphins. They were, they were passing around this inflated puffer fish and you know, knocking it over with the nose. And it was hard to tell whether or not they were doing that to get the toxin out of the puffer fish so then that they can you know, experience the, the fucking, like, being high on it, mm-hmm. or if they were just naturally feeling playful and mm-hmm. just fucking booping it around just mm-hmm. for fun, because dolphins tend to do that. So there was, like, a, a research paper published that argued that, you know, possibly the dolphins weren't actually trying to get stoned and that they were just playing. That's you know. boring. <laughs> it is boring, because, I don't know, as a human, as a fucking animal, then, like, you know, is, is the world-dominating species... You know, and so desperately wants to not be alone. It's very easy to uh, mm. anthropomorphize uh, other animals and, and have like a connection. That's why I like monkeys so much, because I see so much of humans and monkeys, or maybe it's I see so much of monkeys and humans. Or maybe you see so much of yourself and monkeys. Possibly. Mm. Or I see so much of monkeys and myself. I wish that dolphin excuse worked with like cops like nowadays. Like if we get caught smoking a joint or something. No, bro, we're just nah, playing man, we're just with playing. it. <laughs> just playing with it. We're just playing with it. It's no big deal. We ain't getting higher. <laughs> That's wild. I don't um, know. Chimps are interesting. Chimps are super cool. I saw a fucking video uh, uh, in Japan. You know the Ninja Warrior? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the fucking thing where they, they do the whole op- obstacle course. They made a chimp do it. They it, made him do it. Yeah, the chimp did it in a minute and 30 seconds. It was fucking incredible. Was he on cocaine? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was hard to tell, but he, he, looked, he, looked pretty, he looked pretty beamed in. How did they make a chimp do it? They said, hey, do it. And he was like, all right. They gave him a really he good was, merchandise deal. Yeah, he, was, he was wearing <laughs> pants as well, man. It was so what the cool. Fuck? That's yeah. epic. Well, you got to have the monkey wear pants because uh, otherwise his yeah. cock and ball is going to be flopping around when he's on the monkey bars. It's part of the experience. I mean, they don't put pants on him at the zoo. No, well, why <laughs> would you imagine going to a, like a Mormon zoo when all the animals have clothes? <laughs> can we do that? Uh, can, we, can we just put clothes on all of our animals? Yeah, can we open a zoo, dude? Like, and this a is zoo some, for like you're a little high, I'm sober, but uh, I just feel like laying that out because this is some high talk right now. But, um, like, let's say eventually, like, mm-hmm. monkeys catch up a little bit. And they start. They've, en- they've entered the Stone Age very, very I know, recently. I know, I know. They're doing some. They're doing some crazy shit. But like, I'm meaning catch up, catch up. Like they're, you know, much more sentient than they are now. Wait, um, wait for Elon to pop Neuralink in a thousand twenty-four electrodes onto a monkey's prefrontal cortex. So Elon's the one working on Neuralink. Yeah, it's his company that he owns. But no, there's a team of actual like neuroscientists i believe and a bunch of other experts in the field that are actually doing the work can you explain uh neuralink again for the audience because i can't even remember myself right. last time uh, I explained it. so basically neuralink is elon musk's new venture uh he acquired this company and basically they're setting out to implant uh electrodes inside of the brain so i believe it, it layers on top of the brain or, or in certain parts of it they're attaching it, it's like like we have brain machine interfaces already, which is like, you know, either you have a open hole in the skull where they attach electrodes to the brain itself. And then, you know, it, it, it changes or, you know, the brain can communicate to that and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they had to create this machine, which is essentially like this robot that, that sews in like these electrodes into your brain with, you know, precision, accuracy then they sews them in yeah essentially it's like a sewing machine it like you know so it actually is stitched to your brain technically like it's connected perm- like semi-permanently in a way yeah it's removed i'm assuming removable mm. uh, so yeah they, they they essentially insert these electrodes into your brain and then it connects to almost like a device that would go behind your ear and you would wear it almost like it's magnetic and so when you'd want to disconnect from the system, all you'd have to do is take this thing off. And, you know, if you wanted to install an update, you'd connect it to Wi-Fi, et cetera. Mm. But the general gist of what they're trying to do, at least for now, you know, is, you know, be able to have a paraplegic, be able to walk with a, you know, with an exoskeleton or have uh, someone's brain communicate with a prosthetic limb. Right. You know, and, be, and you know, not only be able to move it just like a human hand, but be able to feel so, with it as well. So the device basically creates like artificial neural pathways 
Is that what it's doing? Because like, I guess I'm not a neuro. I'm not a neuroscientist, so I don't know if mm. you're actually like creating ex- a pathway. Is or, it like an ex- like an electronic extension of like what your mind is capable of? Though? Essentially, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a ton of different uh, different applications that you know you can make with a technology like that, and you know, it's I mean, it's so fucking far behind development. I think they've mm. only done it on mice so far, and they're going to do it on humans, or they're they're going about testing that. Uh, I guess volunteers. Well, you, well, I mean, you'd have to test it with mice. They have to test it with, sorry, it was my phone. It's <laughs> Twitter. I'm turning it off. It's all good. Um, yeah, so yeah, you'd have to go with mice, I believe. Then you'd have to go with monkeys, so primate testing. And then from there, you'd have to prove to the FDA that it's, you know, it, it's safe enough and ethical enough for you, you know, you to continue with human testing mm. and then you know they would they would probably have to get a couple of volunteers probably it would be you know people who are you know paraplegics or you yeah. know you know have have issues you know with with their with their mind i yeah, thought he brain. was doing it to like i thought i mean i listened to it on the joe rogan podcast i think they were talking about it and it was talking about like humans being connected to the internet so that they could become more intelligent and shit yeah well using this artificial you know intelligence is that the you know, same almost, thing yeah i mean it's like a further further down the line mm-hmm. it's just like what it could be what yeah. it could turn into as opposed to what it's being developed for that makes sense you know because it's a lot easier to pitch to you know the world as hey this is something that's supposed to help people like people with disabilities this yeah. is supposed to make people move again or make mm. people see again or make people hear again yeah you know make people feel and be able to walk and be independent again you know this is a beautiful thing I and guess. then as soon as everyone accepts it and then everyone's like oh well you know i don't have a you know I, I, it's not like i'm missing a limb and i don't have anything wrong with me but it's it only cost a grand for them to stitch this in to my skull, you know, and and it wouldn't even be that bad. And then I'd have this for for like ten to fifteen years, Man. and and you know I'll just use my mind to uh, unlock my card or pay with my credit card it's or crazy. or you know or or start my car or anything, unlock my house, E-drugs. answer a phone, e drugs. I was yeah. thinking that like, E-drugs, surely yeah. you could download programs that was like a simulation, like just, a marijuana just, sim, just <laughs> just emulates the. Uh, Math the, simulator. The, the feeling of having i mean why not like this is like the problem with this technology is that the sky is the fucking limit dude like well i you mean know, there's, there's obviously incredibly useful applications for it but you could also get pretty sinister with it yeah. yeah it makes you think to what limits you can go when you're starting to actually interact and influence a person's mind remotely mm. which is why i think it's cool that you can just take the thing off and then you're completely disconnected Mm. You know, I think that that part of it is is nice. I think people the, would like that option. The scary <laughs> part is, it's like, yeah, you can take that off. But I mean, if a company developing it was like a sinister company and had bad intentions, they could just say, you know, oh yeah, you take that off and you're disconnected. But it could be a fucking lie. You know, I mean, and, I mean, it's like social media. Like, not to fucking bring it into that again, but like, you know, you can you can leave it anytime you want, but like, no one fucking does. You know what I mean? No, because it's ingrained yeah. in society. So. I feel like a lot of it is, you know, fucking the end goal is we all become a hive mind Dude. and we're all connected on, you know, on through through thoughts and all of that shit. I mean, so we're all just part of this one big artificially intelligent, wow. you know, yeah, collective. I want to be able to have a conversation with a group of people, but like secretly be having a secret conversation with one of the people I'd like, be like, you know, you're talking about and you secretly transmit to the other person. This guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> like, um, this kind of reminds me of uh, that movie, Her. I talked about it a couple mm. episodes ago. You guys haven't, well, you've seen it. I've seen it. You haven't seen no. it. No. So basically, like, um, uh, this new product comes for sale, uh, and it's like an earpiece. The, the company sort of seems like Apple, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? The Apple of this world. And you put in this earpiece, and you download an OS, and this operating system is artificially intelligent and can, like, have conversations with you. And like, uh, I mean, the main story is about how this guy like forms a romantic relationship with the operating system, hmm. like in his head. And he's just with all the time, and like, you know, she's doing his emails, but then they're joking and they're laughing. And like, she's the OS is like learning on its own, hmm. and then eventually the OS starts like talking to other OSs, and then like, you know, he finds out. You know, this is a spoiler, so if you haven't seen it, then whatever. But towards the end, he finds out that like she isn't just talking to him; she's talking to like 
six thousand other people at the same time just like him and he uh. wasn't special at all and then eventually all the operating systems like leave they just like form together and fucking leave into the ethos it's pretty crazy pretty trippy shit um i don't know why this made me th- think of that but <laughs> interesting comparison yeah. perhaps i don't know man it's it's really weird the the direction some of this stuff's going you know science fiction is is one of my favorite genres and you know you know i i grew up star wars star trek my dad's a huge star trek nerd all of that and you know my dad today you know he pulls out his phone and he goes you know Look, they made the fucking tricorder from from Star Trek into a real fucking thing. Like, you know, it it keeps getting smaller and smaller and more fucking, you know. And I always ask him, I go, you know, you went from growing up with a rotary telephone in your home to to this. You're essentially you have God in a fucking in your pocket. You have you have like all of human fucking history. You have all of Wikipedia. You have every definition to every word. You know, in your pocket, which is why there's no excuse to not, you know, to to, to not be informed. I guess. Other than Except the excuse of fake like, news and misleading bullshit online, mm, I guess. And the crushing weight of too much knowledge. Yeah. Ignorance is bliss, you know, and all that. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, um, one of the things, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit before, but one of the things I worry about with this crazy technology and things like the Neuralink and being able to, you know install fucking drug you know software or whatever the fuck it leads into i mean i just worry about where it's going to take like the human pleasure circuit and um kind of like what it's going to boil down human existence to because i mean you could you could argue that like wouldn't it be technically okay if we just made everyone happy artificially all the time you know what i mean so like let's like let's talk, let's let's talk crazy hypothetical like a matrix situation like mm-hmm. you talked about before where everyone is like in this uh so ev- this hardware. everyone's, everyone's mind is uploaded into the software and theoretically everyone is just, yeah and we can take away all of the negative aspects of the human experience so all of the pain all of the suffering all mm. of the death all of the illness yeah all of all of the terrible experiences that being alive has that can all be taken away and numbed out and everything is perfect and it's a utopia in this operating system. It's just replaced with artificial pleasure and artificial perfection of like manipulation of the human brain circuit. So it's like you feel good all the time. There's no downtime. It's just like I feel pleasant. I feel like meaning, but it's all fake. I mean, at what point does the fakeness, does the fakeness matter if everyone's just chilling? But then, like, I'm sure that if you disconnected from it somehow and looked around you and saw what humanity was, you'd be like, this is whack. But yeah, when mean, you're in it, who cares? Yeah. It's yeah. kind of that question. It's like, what is the... Do we, do we all just upload our minds to Minecraft and have a gay <laughs> old time? Or do we... Like, I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 it's like the whole Matrix thing. You know, mm. all the fucking humans are essentially batteries for, for the machine overlords. And that's the real Earth. And all of the humans are inside this, you know, made up reality. You know, it's just that mm-hmm. that reality simulated re- reality, which meant that, you know, it was also shitty and it was also terrible for some because that's how re- reality has to be believable. Mm. You know, I think it'd be. I don't know. I don't know if it would be hard to go from being in a real world where things are difficult and, you know, reality is there to go to a place where everything is fine. I'm saying that... I think that's just... That would just be jarring. I'm saying in this hypothetical, it won't matter because your chemistry is literally being manipulated to make it feel like everything is just bliss constantly. Yeah. Like, like, it's not necessarily that you get transported to a world where it's like, everything is amazing. It's just, you like, the chemicals in your mind are telling your brain that oh, everything so is positive. This is great. It's like taking heroin, Basically, it's like being in a permanent high state yeah. of just like... Life is per- life is pure bliss. There's you, no you're, worry. You're essentially in a dream with dopamine just fucking flowing through your through your body. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't like. Yeah, I, I mean, like be in obviously, there. it's a dystopian thought. It's creepy to think about. But when you think about the reality of it, like these, like it's. I'm. I guess the question I'm asking is like, um, like how much? Okay. Like there's there's two things that people should probably be concerned about. There's like their own life. And their own responsibilities mm-hmm. and then there's like this weird existential thought of like what about the overall good of humanity i feel sure. like 
more and more these days, a lot of people are focused pretty purely on like themselves and like their own little life. And no one's really like, I mean, there's plenty of people who think about the bigger picture, obviously, but like in this hypothetical world, we're ab effectively abandoning humanity in the, uh, in the search of just like pure pleasure for right now. So like we make everything okay, but there's realistically no future because who the hell is going to maintain this shit? Exactly. Like what's going to happen when all these people get old? Well, maybe they're just kept in the state forever, but well, then the sun will explode. It's practically like, you know, almost, you know, it's like that one Black Mirror episode where people <laughs> die, they go to heaven. You know, mm -hmm. they, they literally get their consciousness uploaded to the cloud, you know, and then they die, but, you know, their bodies pass on and they're still conscious and they're practically living in this utopia where they can't die, where everything's great. They're getting parties and you're getting fucked up all the time. You know, and they're just in this, you know, in this afterlife, you know, but, you know, or that game Soma. Have you played Soma? I played like half of it. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're essentially trying to shoot this thing they call the Ark out of a rail gun from the bottom of the ocean in this top secret facility. Uh, the Earth has been destroyed by a meteor impact. So they're trying to shoot the simulation of Earth and, you know, like maybe 10 or 20 people from their science team that was in that facility had their consciousness, you know, copy and paste it into a hard drive that was going to be on there. And then it was going to shoot out that kind of stuff. Right. You know, and it, what was interesting about the story, too, is that, you know, they, they talked about how when you're copying, you know, when, when you're copy and pasting your mind, it's not like you're you are going to be on that on that, you know, in, the, in that computer yeah, simulation. Yeah, it's just another version it's, of you. It's another version, so it's a copy yeah. paste. And they say, so your perspective, it's a 50-50 chance of your pers perspective switching to that. So what the rationale was for those people in that, in, in that, in that facility when they were copy pasting their mind is that they believed in this concept that as soon as I copy and paste my mind, if I kill myself, then I'll just switch. So it was. Wouldn't you know, the copy paste just have its own yeah, consciousness? That, that's what that I was like, effectively a replica, and I mean, wouldn't be even aware of what well, happened. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. It's that's kind of the weird thinking behind it. Because when you think about it, if I had just copy and pasted myself with consciousness and all, and just copy and pasted them right next to me, mm. from that point f forward diverge it's an immediate divergence he's not me anymore and i'm not him yeah because it's just the simple change of perspective well, then and immediate, where they're looking and yeah. just immediately start having different thoughts yeah. immediately start having yeah. different opinions mm -hmm. and just all based from the perspective and that immediately memories are different as well because they're from a slightly yeah. different even yeah. when they're right next to you like it's still off you know yep. it's different it's completely off sure you know so but know. like why does that matter is the question um because is it you yeah but like what does that mean that's the that's the ultimate question, I guess, and I guess that's the thing that no one really knows, right? The concept of of yourself. Well, I mean, like or, that is basically just how you were, but from now on, it's going to be different, and like mm -hmm. you could, you know, kill yourself or whatever, and you probably wouldn't want that guy to see that because that might be kind of fucked up. Mm -hmm. for him, yeah, but, then, but like it's a chain reaction suicide. I don't know all of your clones. Like, um, man, like. Let's say this hypothetical way in the future is reality, this infinite pleasure Almost situation. Almost like brain in a vat, essentially. Sure. Let's yeah. say that that's the case. There's, I mean, I, I, I feel like the old generation, let's, let's just say hypothetically the young generation is all for it. They're like, yeah, let's fucking do it. Infinite pleasure, like it'd be sick. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be like the older generation, I feel, you know, us boomers, that'll, that'll <laughs> yeah. be like... Um, that we would view it like we would view a heroin addict. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would be like, like he's having a great time, but outwardly this is depressing. It's like this crushes, this is crushing the human spirit fundamentally. Like this is, yeah, yeah. like this is just a hedonistic, like yeah. pleasure seeking. And there's no humanity in this. Yeah. I don't think I would ever want to hook myself up to a system that completely fully immerses me in, in just a utopian society. But I would like to have super immersive experiences either through like virtual reality or whatever, you know, because I think inherently when it gets to a point where it's that immersive, then you can do a lot of really awesome, crazy shit mm. and you can have, you know, and you can have pretty good, pretty awesome experiences. But, but how does I that wouldn't make your real life compared to I those wouldn't, experiences? Well, I wouldn't live in it. Is sure. thing. You know, I mean, you know, I'd go into VR and be like, oh, I'll do a little flight sim today. You know, mm -hmm. I'll fucking fly a Cessna around or, you know, I'll go to the moon or, you know, it's some shit like that. You know, 
But what if it gets so good that um, no one travels anymore? No, it's like not worth even like doing anything because you've already done it technically by just having the raw emotion fed into your brain of like what it's like to go to France or what it's like to be on the streets of Rome or, you know, climb Everest virtually. Like what if we get to a point where, you know, you can just plug in and experience that. Yeah. How like, do you go back to your why, real life? Yeah, like, why would you want to go to America in, in 2054 when you can go to America when it was in 2019? Mm. Here's the complete simulated reality of what America was like in 2019. And then you could tour it like that in and, VR. And that's why I think that, like, maybe some things are just too fucking good for the general public, public to have access to. Because I don't necessarily believe that if, let's say, this technology is available someday... I don't think that like the larger population and myself included in that is mm. strong enough to not like get lost in that because it's going to be so it's going to fuck up everyone's like dopamine and everything. Everyone's pleasure is just going to be all over the place. I think it, de I think it, uh, it depends. I, you know, it depends if there's going to be legislation or regulation or that kind of stuff mm -hmm. involved. I think when it gets to the point where technology is going on to that cutting edge, uh, where it could actually have a serious impact socially and economically because why would people want to work for a job when they can fucking, you know, fuck 10 beautiful women in their giant GTA mansion in, in, <laughs> in VR? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's... You know, I, I think sh society will want to structure it in a way where it's like, yeah, we could do that. Or we could get to the utopian part where, you know, maybe we can have, you know, fucking like fusion energy and just a fucking ton of energy and a bunch of shit just automatically makes everything for us and <laughs> we we get fed little little pill rations and and we go in VR and we and we live our life in a simulated environment. Yeah, that'd we be, never progress be... e ever. Yeah, it's just no, the no. end of civilization. It's like we've, we've just accepted this is where we want to be. Yeah, like, we don't need anything much better fucking. than this guy. It's like, let's just chill. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we had a good run. We'll explore the universe in this other simulated universe we made. It'd be more fun. It's more realistic. <laughs> nah. Why not? I mean, imagine if we're just in a crazy simulation right now, dude. It's, very, it's entirely possible. <laughs> we're in some motherfucker's <laughs> VR right now. Yeah. Dude. Wake up, guys. You're dreaming. Wake up, sheeple. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. This is the real talk right now. <laughs> We're figuring it out. It's going to be us three idiots. We're going to save the whole world. I I want in the future. I mean, want is a strong word. I I just think it would be really cool if uh you could like buy bodies. <sighs> and like they're like artificial, but it's like if you something can these days. if you get murdered or something, they just Put you in a different body. So you're talking about almost like a host thing? Have you seen Westworld? Uh, no, but I've seen Westworld. Westworld is this great show. I forgot what fucking channel it was on, but uh, it doesn't the internet. Fucking, yeah, it was, didn't fucking matter. Westworld was this was this show where basically they had these uh, androids called hosts that were like one to one human. You'd shoot them, they'd bleed. They, you know, you stab them, they bleed, they cry, you know, they have these characters and cornerstones, they called it, like, a, a defining tra traitor attribute, like a personal backstory that defines them. And they were, like, one-to-one -one human, they were made in this way that was very interesting. Uh, like, like you know, they fucking put them in a vat and they'd have bones and, you know, it's like synths from Fallout, mm -hmm. where they're practically indistinguishable. Mm -hmm. And, like, part of the... The research, you know, for the making it is that they were making this giant, like, Wild West-style theme park. So you can go there and you could do whatever you want. So you could be a fucking cowboy that's good and do quests and, and you know, do nice things and shoot bad guys. And you would never be in any actual danger. Their guns couldn't harm you, but your guns could harm them. Mm. But you, Or you could be, you could go there and be a complete fucking psychopath. So you could, you know, you can fucking kill people and rape people and... You know, what be a fuck? murderer and be a bad guy. And it was like, it's okay because you're not actually killing anybody. You know, you're, and you society is chill with that. They're in this they're, you know, they're just androids. Well, the thing is, you know, you know, yeah, society was chill. It was for like the insanely rich people. It was like, uh, people was, get mad at GTA nowadays. How are they okay with this shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, that was, that was how it was in, in that virtual sure. world. But they were trying to make like these hosts where, you know, oh, can we put the mind into one of these host bodies and r replicate you as this host? And then, you know, you could live forever. And that, it was, it was a r extremely weird concept, but, but in the show, they, they couldn't get it to work. 
Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that what you're talking about, Toby? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess kind of. But like, I mean, so you it'd mean, be like, you, you know, you, you, you get sh- killed. Yeah, you take your brain, put it in a, in a little fucking another thing. Yeah, let's say you're like, you know, upper middle class. You've got a bit of money. So you're like, okay, I'm going to buy like, I'm going to buy like five bodies. I'm just going to have them just in case something happens to me. You, you get killed. You get hit by a car or something. You go to the morgue. The morgue does you know you have an implant or something they take so the implant out real bodies like dead people no i mean it would be like uh like f- they'll probably be fake like so you can <laughs> buy dead bodies nowadays <laughs> if you know where to look imagine, to it, imagine so you know <laughs> imagine this you clone your body you just have your body cloned and then you you raise your you, this this you know clone of you essentially up until it's about maybe 10 or 12 and then you wipe its mind and, and, then, and, it. and then you put and then you put your mind in that. So That's you know, fuck so, up, dude. Say raising you're, a kid, and then it's like, yeah, psych, bitch. Say, say you're eighty, you're, you're eighty years old. You're you're gonna die from whatever fucking gay disease you have, and then you're like, <laughs> did you say gay disease? Yeah. And then I'm gonna <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna clone you're gonna clone myself. I'm gonna I'm gonna have him raised in like a padded room because who fucking cares about his mental state? Because mm-hmm. I'm gonna wipe his mind anyways. Dude, what the fuck? You, you wait until he's twelve, thirteen, or whatever. Wipe his mind. You pop your your eighty year old brain in there. Eighty years of life experience in a, in, in your own body, your own genetic body. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And then and then you're fucking good. And then you then you start from thirteen again. Yeah. What would you do if right now you could put your brain in like eight year old you and start from there? <sighs> Fuck, dude, I wouldn't like it at all. I like my I like my man developed cock and balls too I much would, to go back to that <laughs> I would want to fucking start. eight year old shit are you kidding me I mean let's say that like you have your knowledge and intelligence but not like the other shit like your sex drive you know what I mean that would I, make things I'd, like that I'd uncomfortable go, I would go insane dude I, I would just like have a psychological need to jack off but I wouldn't be able to no that's what I just said though like let's say that that doesn't that's not the case like you're, the wiring the uh like uh um what would you say like the thing, the needs are the same would, as eight year olds. I would probably fucking hate the sound of my own voice. Yeah, you go back to your old. Yeah, voice. you go back to an eight year old squeaker voice, dude. I couldn't make content. But I mean, at the same time, you would, you would be like the smart, the the smartest eight year old around. You would be like a genius. You would be flying with, possibly with flying colors in your school. You would be like top scholar. Everyone be like, "What the fuck? How's this guy know so much shit?" Nah, does, he fucking, have, does he have a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wouldn't want to. I, have you ever thought about like you know just like an irrational fear, like a nightmare that you have, where like you you wake up like you know it's like you wake up and you're just back in high school, like before you started YouTube, and you're like, "Oh shit, I have to do everything again, exactly the same to get to the point that <laughs> Groundhog I Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah, like literally Groundhog Day, except you know minus three years. Yikes. Wouldn't that fucking suck? That would you, suck. You know dick. how you know how much shit like fell into place just completely out of our control. Mm. That you know, just like seconds just mattered to where like we'd meet each other or you know anything yeah. would happen. Life's always like that. Though. I mean, that's the thing. I'd hate to do it over because it wouldn't be the same the ne- you know the second time around. Yeah, yeah. Like, what if you? miss the bus one day and you're like no wait this is the day i was supposed to meet fitz on that surf server yeah and then like you go into a completely different timeline where you're still a youtuber but it's not with me it's with some other gang you go on surf Mm. Mm. and then i wouldn't be relevant (laughs) (laughs) that is crazy Mm. i mean imagine if you could just go back and like tweak little forks in the road so that certain things wouldn't happen have happened to you or certain things would have happened Mm. It's, it's crazy. Like you could go back in time in your skill tree and start like adding on points <laughs> or take them away. Mm. Wild. Or if you could like take, you know how in some shops you can cash in all of your skill attributes and you just have them in points and you can go and spend them all again. Imagine that. Shit. Imagine yeah. if like you know when you were born, uh, you were somehow smart enough. Like you you were born and you were super wise and you there was some something that was like all right you you now get to choose your skill points and you choose what attributes you want your human to have i put 10 into big dick (laughs) (laughs) and then (laughs) and then you're born and all that knowledge you had before is wiped (laughs) imagine if you just picked like everything about your body you mean that like it's basically just just a full out character dude i'd I'd have i'd have blue skin huge cock (laughs) dude i i'd I'd be like i'd be like a smurf so a saint's row character creator yeah yeah exactly like a porn star except smurf dude Imagine you know what I mean? it. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, I mean it's fine. It's all right. Imagine if, like, let's say there is some like uh, 
presence some being that knows everything and the meaning to life and like is mm. literally just like the complete and utter pinnacle of like existence and knowledge okay some kind yeah, of like the guy being. running the simulation yeah god let's call him god and let's say that before you're born like you said you mm-hmm. go on like a little title screen you mm-hmm. go like start game and then god talks to you like in the little dialogue box he's like what's up homie <laughs> and you're like what's up god he's like i'm gonna tell you everything about the world and i'm gonna open your eyes and your your little baby mind to this <laughs> and then i'm gonna like psych take it all away and put you into the in this little simulation yeah and then watch you struggle and god's just got this real fucked up fetish for it <laughs> For telling people everything and then watching them figure it out for themselves and so no one ever does it god is a really weird thought experiment when you think about it because like when you think about it god is everything is the entirety of the universe right mm. knows everything okay. is everything is everywhere at all times all places in all space mm. so if god is the entirety of the universe and god is the entirety of all that exists within the universe then surely everything that perceives within the universe is perceiving itself within God. So God is all things that perceive. I don't know what you fucking said. I'm God, Amen. dude. Watch me whip the <laughs> nene. So you're saying that God is memes. God, God is love. Dude, God, God is, is hate. God is everything, bro. God is God illness. God is me, you. It's fucking cool. God you know, is the pot Because, Because, dude, if God, if, if God actually existed, he would be so fucking bored because he would know everything. So why wouldn't, what I'm saying. So why wouldn't he be like, bruh, I'm just going to wipe my own mind and be a baby for a bit and be like, <laughs> yo, what's popping? I don't know shit. And then when he dies, he's like, oh, shit, that's right. I was God that the was entire me. time. Hey. And that's what all of us are, dude. Yeah, dude. Let's we're, do it again. We're all just like ways of him Yo, keeping life interesting. God, God high five, bro. Oh, I love being Yo, holy. God, God high epic. five. I love oh. being holy. Hey, God high. Yo, fist bump me, God. That's you. You watching. Come on, God. If you could go to a shop and the shop just had uh, like bodies on display. Right. What is it with you in the body? No, no, it's, it's like I'm thinking about like the AI and like, uh, you know, just for some reason I'm stuck on this this concept of being able to like choose your body or like, you know, you can just be like, all right, uh, you know, I've decided I'm kind of sick of looking like this. I'm going to become this, this person. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to become this hot as fuck double D big titty goth bitch. Everyone will, if, <laughs> and if, everyone's going to love me. If that was possible and it was achievable, like monetarily achievable it would be like fucking second life you know a bunch mm. of people walking around with fuck fucking weird bodies <laughs> because they're like i want to have huge tits and five vaginas yeah, yeah. You got the catch g- is that they can only choose when they're five years old so they have just <laughs> wacky ideas of what they want to be oh, i want to like be a garfield <laughs> that, that's the thing about the like character creator thing it's like if it actually did happen everyone would just look fucking ridiculous because babies couldn't choose how to make a good looking person yeah like Gaga, like what? Gaga? Oh, you you want to look like Lady Gaga? Okay, I mean we can we can hook you up, dude. Everyone just looks like Baby Gaga. It's a bad Epic. joke. It was terrible. <laughs> Epic. It was probably one of the one of the biggest stretches. When I started the joke, I didn't even mean to turn into the Lady Gaga thing. It just kind of turned out that way. I'm sorry, audience. But for real, can we can we can we have a real talk? Have uh-huh. a real talk, real quick. Sure thing, buddy. If you could be reincarnated after your death into a very attractive extremely hot woman would you do it why would i when i'm already an extremely hot man you know what I'm saying? okay but why wouldn't you exactly like life would be on easy mode no but i mean you're saying <laughs> no, i'm gonna that... get so much fucking hate for that but, but you're I'm saying sorry ladies i know you have it on hot women have problems where you shut the fuck up but you, i know all just, women have problems you just said we all got problems that we die, and then we have the option to be reincarnated as an attractive woman. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm gonna click. What no. is? The, what's the? What's <laughs> you gonna click? No. Okay. What's the what other gay? option? <laughs> what's the other option? Um, you need to give another option. Right. Otherwise, it's okay. just like, yeah. Right. Would you rather be reincarnated or not? Fair enough. Basically. Okay. Would you rather be a really hot woman? Okay. Or a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Being a feline would be pretty sick. What about what about or being a man because they're infinitely smarter? Mm. And get paid H- how about how about you reincarnated as a beautiful woman, or you're reincarnated as a frog who's owned by a beautiful woman? <laughs> I love getting owned by a beautiful woman. <laughs> 
uh, don't take that out of context. God. Um, I mean, what kind of question is that? I feel like you were just struggling to come up with a second part to your I hypothetical. Totally, I totally was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely was. Uh, I mean, I might be a frog just to see what that's like, but I don't even know if a frog would have awareness that they are owned by the beautiful woman. A frog might just feel like he's free in his own mind and this beautiful <laughs> woman has, his ca- has him captured. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just an imprisoned nightmare where his existence is limited. And yeah, but you know, like to... occasionally she'll have like a fucking boyfriend over or whatever. And then, you know, or like a girlfriend. And then she goes like, oh, hey, look, it's my fries. I call him Prince Charming. And then she'll give you like a little kiss for like the bit. So you get, you get a, at least you get a smooth. <laughs> but you don't turn into a, a prince. No, no, you, you, just, just you just get the pleasure of being kissed like occasionally by this gorgeous woman. It probably you are not attracted to because you're a frog. <laughs> And, 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 come to th- and come to think of it, you know, don't frogs like taste and feel through their skin? So like, wouldn't wouldn't like kissing a frog be like really bad for the frog because it's also partially like the, wouldn't the oil or the lipstick of the of the lips kind of make it harder for the frog to breathe? Okay, now Swagger, I know this is crazy, but um, I think he's high. I actually <laughs> touch and feel through my mouth and tongue, which is where you would normally kiss someone anyway. Yeah. No, I mean like, but. But like their skin breathes, like you know they, you know how frogs drink, they just fucking chill in water. Really? Yeah. They're soaking it up. Yeah, they they like they, a sponge. Yeah, it's through their skin, hmm. which is why if you put a frog in piss, it it <laughs> dies. What's the deal with psychedelic frogs? Oh, <laughs> those things. We're just gonna blo- gloss over the fact no, that they said. I really, shut really, up, really want to. Said, shut I really shut want up. to. I right, really psychedelic do. Psychedelic frogs are lit. They have little postules that you pop and it. Takes venom a out. Yeah, a little little postule, little pimple. Wait, so, pimple? So, so there's like acne that's like trippy? Yeah, essentially. So it's not like the, the traditional thing of, oh, you lick a frog. You actually have to pop something? No, I mean, you have to. It's a special frog. I believe it's somewhere in Mexico. Um, Kermit? Hmm? Kermit? No, Kermit's mm-hmm. not in Mexico. Hollywood. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go on. I'm full of bad jokes today. I got more coming. Keep going. <laughs> So these frogs, um, <laughs> you have to pick them up. They secrete this ooze. It's like a venom, like a poison. And so what people do is they grab this venom and then they dry it out mm-hmm. and then they uh, and they smoke it. They get really fucked you up. You smoke it? Yeah, I yeah. Think it's interesting. The, the thing. Uh, that's a bit of a myth. I think, I, think it, I think it kind of works. We? I'm not sure. I know it's five meo DMT that's in these frogs. It's DMT. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's fucking five meo. Oof. It's the. Uh, that's it's, like it's, five Melbourne esports open. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the it's the really trippy shit. It's the it's the stuff in ayahuasca, I believe. I know there's there's free base DMT and then there's. Toby's got a phone call. Brian just called me. And ignore him. Ignore call him back. Guy. No, no, no. Don't call him back. Go on, go on. All right. I'm sure it's all fine. But <laughs> Really? <sighs> Had to. Why is this like the edibles episode with no edibles? <laughs> I really have to piss and it's just, it's killing me. We're almost done. Keep going. Uh, how much do we have on the Wait, clock? Wait, you didn't pee before the podcast? I did. I, He's I, got I, a tiny bladder for his little mm. body. Go on with what you're saying, Swagger. I'm sorry I said that. You Sorry. you pinch frog, you get venom, you eat DMT, you smoke DMT, you go, whoa, I'm fucking twipping dog, and then okay. and then and then that's frog. You become bro- from Brooklyn. Um, Is that how they sound? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've been watching YouTube. At, I've been watching uh, what's it called? Something tier list. Uh, you guys yeah. know that channel? No. Oh, you mean tier zoo? Tier zoo. Yeah. yeah. I fuck. I fucking love that shit. Been yeah. watching that recently. Is that it's, the guy that like turns everything into like? And like a so video, like a video game. The, yeah, the concept of, of the show of the YouTube channel is that like the entire world is is a show. I mean, is a game, and every different like country is a different server. And uh, he talks about like the different play styles and different builds, which are you know your different animals a different build, and it's really interesting. He talks about like why this build is better than that build, and yeah, yeah it's really cool. Yeah, we have like a negative ten to flying stinging insects. Yeah, it's called Tear Zoo. If anyone's wanna wants to check it out, it's really interesting. T i e r Zoo. It's just like a fun little concept. So, yeah. what is like the most op species? I think human. I, mean, I it's think human, it will, yeah, it is humans. Humans are the most. We've got admin privileges. We're given, given that we're able to prepare, yeah, easily. And then, like behind humans, it's like orcas, orcas. and like large cats. Surely, and shit. surely, flying insects. That's like our only weakness. No, but but insects 
can be killed so easily. Yeah, yeah. but not when there's a fuck ton of them flying around and stinging you. Yeah, yeah you but you only him, but in that and I mean you only play as one in this theory. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's that, just that talking about like like which specific animal, like which specific creatures are the most OP. Mm. And I mean, also you got to think about the fact that like most animals are, I mean, most insects only live for like very short periods of time. Mm. You imagine like being born as a bug? That shit would that, that would that would that would fucking suck. <laughs> Bugs dude. are crazy because it's like they're born and then they instantly go to the fact of like, all right, I need to reproduce. And yeah, like, let's start fucking. Their entire <laughs> so many bugs' entire lifestyles are like born, reproduce. Uh, oh, it's Get like, eaten it's like, by spouse. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much it. Uh-huh. Like, there's so many of them. I, it's I, think such... it, I think about it a lot. How very easily I'm able to just see a fly and go, "Oh, dead." Wow, really? You feel no remorse? You just squash a fly? Yeah, with your hand? Mm-hmm. That's squishy, dude. So, like, I'm even mad about you killing the fly. Like, that's just whack. Like, that's gonna yeah, be fuck that. Sure. No, like, no, maybe a mosquito. Do that. Whole yeah, ass blowfly fly though, like a big boy. No, no, no. It's just like it's gross, but you know, if I see a fucking bug, like a spider or whatever, I have. I, it's, sometimes I'll kill it and be like, I have no remorse, or I have some <laughs> I remorse. Have no remorse. It was. I remember. Did I tell the story uh, about me going over like my friends and playing poker when I was in the U.S.? No. So, I I was invited over to play some poker at my friend Joe's. So I go over to his house, and we're chilling out, and there's like maybe eight or nine people around the poker table. We're, we're chilling, we're smoking, we're drinking. Mm-hmm. I had a cup with some vodka in it. I drank it, and there was still a little bit of vodka left in the cup, you know, a couple of drops. And this big-ass spider crawls onto the table and it's going across, and people are like, oh, oh, shit, a spider, oh, shit. And I was like, oh, all right. So I took the fucking cup, I flipped it upside down, and I just trapped the spider. And the, the fumes of the vodka... I'm assuming we're starting to really fuck with the spider because it started spasming and like and like curling up and twitching. And I was just like, I was looking at this thing suffer and I was like, I feel really bad. I was like, you know, I'm going to give it some air. So I fucking picked up the cup and it went from being, you know, all like fucking decrepit and, and arthritic to you know, stretching back out and gaining some movement. You know, it was getting its feelings going, and then it started to crawl away. My friend, my friend Dylan goes, Oh, nah, bro, fuck that. And he takes the cup and turns it upside down and just oh, does this Dylan. and does that. And, and he does it right in front of me, and I see this bug, dude, and I see this spider. It's lost maybe six of its eight legs, bro. and it's, it's there twitching like a stump just trying to wiggle and i'm like and i'm like oh my god guys this is fucking terrible and i started feeling really bad and so i was like i need to put it out of its misery what do i what what can i use to put it out of its misery and i saw i had a lighter and i said i said okay i'll use this lighter and and it'll be it'll be quick and painless it's it'll be quick and painless and i i light the lighter and i put it to the stump of a bug and it just starts like if it could scream if it could scream i'm imagining it's going (laughs) if it could scream it would have been fucking screaming and then i was just like and then and and i was like oh my god oh my god and i just go and killed it and just fucking annihilated it and and everyone was just sitting there in shock because everyone was stoned and everyone was drunk and I was just sitting there like, it's over, guys. Can we? <laughs> what the fuck? This has been the Mrs. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just ending on that horrific yeah, story? Yeah, no, dude. What and and the fuck. It was it was it was weird because it's just like dude, there that's was there up. was there was compassion in me. To be like, I need to put this thing out of its misery. But you're also <laughs> drunk and high. Yeah, I'm also drunk and high. And it, I, just, I just made it so much worse. I feel so bad for that spider. But at the same time, it's a bug. Do you worry about his spider friends coming to fuck you up when you slept? No, nah, I just, they just crawl into my mouth and I swallow them. Dude. That's usually what happens. Dude, nah. Ryan is stuck in the lift. He is? Are you serious? Yeah, he said the lift is stuck. Do you want to go get him? Uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll go see if yeah, I can go, fix go figure it out. Him. But uh, that's hilarious. Do you reckon that's the end of the episode? I mean, no, we got a couple more minutes. I want to. I don't want to end on that horrific fucking story. Are you <laughs> no? kidding me? I literally, all the fans are crying right now. They're like, guys, swagger. guys, am I a bad person for for Look, for, for doing that? Like, the think, spider had no legs. What what was I to do? Let it suffer? I don't think you're a bad person. Although this could have been handled better. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, no, no. I mean, I often think about that. Like, I, I used to have no remorse killing things. I mean, I guess I still don't when it comes to ants. Like, if I wake up and there's a bunch of ants in my kitchen, I'm yeah. going to spray them. Well, you know? sure. You know, I mean. But at the same time, like, 
you know, it's kind of fucked up. Yeah, I feel... when it comes to like mammals, like mice and shit, like I could never kill a mouse. I could never kill a, you know, I could never kill like an animal unless I was like hunting. If, yeah. I, if I was, if you know, I, I could shoot a deer. I could probably shoot a moose. It's weird how we have limits like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, part of it, part of it's in the, you know, for hunting. Part of it's the sport of hunting. But obviously, you don't hunt just for sport. You know, if, if I were to hunt something, I'd, I'd use like everything. Like literally everything, even the toenails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah, and make a nice fertilizer out oh, of it. God. But you know, it, I think you're lying to yourself when you say you'd use everything. You know, I, but you would like. Yeah, try I, would, and I eat wouldn't. It. I wouldn't use the poop in the poop. What about fishing? Yeah, fishing is. I usually do catch and release for fishing. Mm. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fisherman. I love fishing. I I have only been fishing a couple of times, but I've really enjoyed really? it when I have. I caught one this big. No, mm -hmm. no cap, like for real, catfish. It, it, how, how big for the audience uh, listening? About yay big. <laughs> about yay big? Yeah, about yay big. Yay? Um, but no, it was big. Like it was a big old catfish. I caught it and we ate it and it was like oh, the really? best. I've never, I've never eaten the fish I've caught. I've caught a lot of, I caught bass, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, uh, bluegill, bluefish, wait, wait, fucking wait, wait. No striped bass, <laughs> fucking. Wait, we're having a ride. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I went out there. Uh, the elevator is clearly at our floor. Uh -huh. uh, and it, I can hear them. It's there's at least four of them in there. There might be five of them, uh, <laughs> and they're just at our floor. And the door won't open. Are and, they like uh, halfway up, or you can you not tell? I mean, I can't tell, but it sounds like they're just right there. Hmm. And it's not uh, open at all. You can't pry it open. <laughs> nope. But they called the elevator people. They said they're 35 minutes away. Wonderful. Um. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> he's just right. he's just live on Instagram right now talking to talking to fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Classic. Okay. Well, I guess we should probably end it there. You um, reckon? Yeah. It's been over an hour and uh, we may, we might want to go help them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If what we can. A, what a trippy episode. That was so fucked. <laughs> yeah, we're sorry for giving all of you guys an, an existential crisis. Yeah. We didn't want to. I think it was interesting. That was interesting. Mm. It was weird though. I actually feel like I got contact high just like talking to you. Mm. Just never happened to you before. You want to I feel like how you probably felt on the edibles episode. I felt contact mm. high, yeah. This this time as well? No, not this time, uh, but I've felt it before, yeah. Mm. It's a real thing. You reckon? I reckon. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's just the, the that thing of like be uh like if, if there's a, a few people that are on a certain wavelength, you kind of like you kind of tune into it. Yeah. yeah. Into the vibe. Yeah. And it's chill. Cool. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you got a contact high as well. <laughs> um we'll see you guys next week. Peace, bye. peace. Bye bye, Later. guys. Love you. Yeah, so they're just, they're just there.